Game number one, Sky Temple. We're still in Group B, everybody. We have the Russian players against Team Poland. The European Nations Cup qualifier continues. So, just to get it out of the way, right at the beginning, there is a reason why the blue team is called Russian players and not Team Russia. It's a subtle distinction, but pretty much they asked to be called that and not Team Russia, since they want to make clear that they don't necessarily endorse Russian politics here. Now, I know that there's going to be some people that get immediately enraged, just like, why are they allowed to play? And the only thing that I can tell you is two things. First of all, these players have been playing Heroes of the Storm for a long, 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 long time. They usually play in mixed teams with you. Ukrainian players. They've played with mixed teams and Ukrainian players in the Meta Madness, in the X Cup, in all of this stuff. So there's no bad blood between any of these guys and I'm not going to punish them for being born in the wrong country. So since not even the Ukrainians that participated in this tournament have any problems with them playing here, there is absolutely no reason for some snowflakes out there to be uh, to be offended of somebody else's behalf that doesn't have an issue. I talked about it in the previous ones. It's the only thing I want to say about it. They're allowed to play and they're welcome to it, but they want to make it clear that they are calling themselves the Russian players and not Team Russia for obviously political reasons. But there we are. Now, with that out of the way, we are still headed into our first map and we have Sky Temple coming up. So this is probably a highlight of the group. These two were from the beginning the two teams that were expected to make it out of the group unless of course disaster strikes and we have some massive, massive upsets happening. Now, in this particular case, both of them have already played two matches and both of them won their matches and didn't drop a map yet. So this is going to determine which team gets the first seed out of Group B and which team gets the second seed out of Group B. So, gonna be fairly interesting. Two strong teams and they definitely can also make it to the offline event. Now in case you haven't heard it yet, but we have an offline event coming up in Europe actually. In Berlin, the 10th and 11th of June. It's gonna take place in Berlin, in the Experian uh, to uh, be exact. There's a link in the description, you can check the Experian out. You can also have more details about the offline event, about the dates and everything else. So if you haven't really heard anything about it or you just wanna double check and you watch this on YouTube, jump into the description and have a look there. The Experian is our partner at the Alexanderplatz in Berlin and the venue is awesome. So you can see some pictures if you go to the website and yeah, just have a bit of a look of how the entire event is going to look like. It's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to it. Then we're going to have the players on site. We're going to have a team from Asia. We're going to have a team from North America. So it's probably your best opportunity to go and watch Heroes of the Storm, International Heroes of the Storm live. So definitely make sure to check that out. There's also a crowdfunding that is linked in the description. I've been talking about it before, but making these offline events happen last year in, Ber uh, in uh, Miami, this year now in uh, Berlin is quite expensive. So community support would be more than appreciated there. So if you would like us to host more international tournaments like this one, then uh, consider checking out the crowdfunding and supporting it. There's a couple of incentives over there, but you can check that out for yourself. Now we have aggressive compositions in game number one already, as you can see. Blaze and Anubarak immediately attempting to dive here and then Jaina for follow-up damage. Would of course be kind of nice for them to also have a proper lockdown. They go for Rega. he can still play the totem build here, but they don't have a Malfurion or a Stukov that they can play around with this now. On the other side, we have Anduin, so he can safeguard a target by just pulling it out. Ooh, and Medivh, who obviously allows them to do that even more. Alvaros has played a sick Medivh game against Norway. Now we're on Sky Temple and we get Falstad for some global action. So the Hark against Falstad, the globals are in play. And with that, we are going into game number one, everybody. We have the Russian players against Team Poland. Let's go. Game number one, Russian players on the left with Bishops on Falstad. We have Renella on Rega, Mai Tri on Blaze, Shiza Kid on Anubarak, and Quirty is playing Jaina. To the right side of the map, it's Team Poland. We are playing with Ruchu on Dehaka. We got Lavakal on Anduin, Arion on Johanna, Alvaros again on Medivh, and Itrax is playing Sylvanas. Let's go! Let's see which team can take the first slot in Group B. 
pretty excited for this one. I want to see who comes out swinging here. So far, we had a lot of 2-0 results in the group stage, which is to be expected, obviously. The top teams, they get distributed between all of the groups. You don't want a group that is just fully stacked with only top teams. So there's a seeding that is involved there as well. Therefore, discrepancies in skill are to be expected. And later, as we're progressing through the tournament, of course, we will have much closer results between the teams. And it's going to be super interesting to see who comes out ahead and makes it to the offline event. But generally, this is the highlight of the group, one way or another. Both of them haven't dropped the map yet. And we are going to find out together who is going to win this one. Level 1 for Jaina. We got the fingers of a Frost. We have for Medivh, again, the stacking. He did an absolutely stellar job in the game against Norway. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to stack against the Russian players, but he should still be able to do fairly well here. Can he stay alive, though? That's the question. Can you complete your baseline? Yes, no. We're going to wait and figure that out. This is, of course, a map where, first of all, the objective is very predictable in uh, the rotation where it spawns. So you always know what's coming up next. And uh, since it attacks structures directly, any kind of structural damage that you can do without the objective is going to give you a little bit of a leg up. So uh, could be that Silvana is going to play a massive role here since she allows you to take structures down very quickly. But for now, it is the blue team that is pulling ahead a bit as they are starting to take down this wall. Which means if you capture the top temple afterwards, you have a very good shot at taking the top side fort down. So something to keep in mind here. And it might actually result in Team Poland making a stand at the top and going for the top temple instead of playing for the one in the middle. So we'll actually check this one out. But well, at the same time now, we got uh, down at the bottom of the map, Falstad, the birdie is in position. It's pretty much where you want your global to be before the first objective gets announced because you can push the lane out and then later on fly into the middle, fly towards the top, trying to help the team out wherever they are claiming an objective or trying to. So with the first temple rotation announced, the teams now have to make a choice there. Dehaka not down at the bottom of the map, so he's still staying topside. They can still play this out a little bit different here. We'll have a look. But either way, we now have Siege Giants claimed on both sides. Blue team, red team, they're both going for their camp, just attempting to time it with the objective so that there is going to be pressure that has to be dealt with by the opponent's team. <laughs> for a second, Mediv getting attacked a little bit. Nice juke from Anubarak, and yeah, there it is, the attempt to take the top side fort down. So, as already expected, the blue team is now making a move for the top temple because they're hoping to take this fort down completely, and they're getting kills! Nicely done! They take Medivh down, so those 13, 14 stacks that Medivh had are gone. Fantastic opening for the blue team. Keep in mind, Medivh was one of the top damage dealers in the game against Norway because he was able to, st to complete his quest this early. Now that he doesn't have that opportunity anymore, this is a big blow against them. So that's going to be super interesting now. Top side, we have already more shots fired in the middle. They're claiming even more. And yeah, for Team Poland, they got to be a bit careful here. You don't want to fall behind this early in the game. Now, the good news for uh, them is they don't have to deal with Jaina. The problem is that with her escorting another minion wave, and this also means that they are now starting to do more damage down at the bottom of the map. So yeah, up here, there's already another play being made for Medivh, but this time with the portal, he's able to get out. Drag still connecting. And Richu gets forced back. The shots are being fired and the topside fort is now starting to lose hit points. So they are doing a great job here. If they can get all the shots, they will take that one down. Another turnaround attempt as they're going for the Arca. The shield is out already. Falstad is in the middle, is pushing this one even further. I gotta admit that the Russian players are definitely opening this up with a bit of a bang. Joanna is rotating between the lanes now in an attempt to ensure that she's at least getting uh, the experience for the team. But this fort is nearly gone. And with the help of Falstad, they should be able to take it down very quickly later on. So, yeah, it's going to be super interesting. Down to the bottom of the map, more and more pressure is being done by Falstad. So there's the next set of attacks. They have taken the lead in experience as well, which means that they are now closing in on level 10. And of course, another camp is up as well. 
And here we go. So how is Poland going to deal with this? They are trying to invade, and they're doing a good job. Bishop's attempting to fly out, but that was a bit too much for him to handle, especially with Sylvanas moving in and disabling the towers. He didn't even have any structural assistance there. So one tower is not going to make it here. A great job with this attack. Gate down, tower down, and they got the kill against Falstad. Gust is in, level 10 abilities are ready now. And up at the top, yeah, this camp has to be dealt with, and the Haka is already on his way. If not, then they would lose that fort for sure. So here we are. The little attack is coming. Blaze gets attacked, turns around, stuns them out, and as the bunker are both teams with heroic abilities now. Leyline ready, and so is the Blessed Shield. The Haka, he went for the isolation again. And up at the top, they're doing their thing. But the bot lane pressure... These rotations are awesome. I love the rotational play from both teams. We had so many of these teams just sneaking onto a lane where the opponent wasn't ready yet and taking a couple of the structures down. So job well done here. We have a kill for a kill, but the Polish team is trying to turn this around, and that's what they're doing. Coming in with a good attack against the blue team, but not able to claim this just yet. Top side, though, will fall. With Mitra sitting here and starting to poke out that fort it will be destroyed which also removes the fountain of course so any fight over the top objective is going to become so much more dangerous here at the same time we currently have the push through the middle happening but down at the bottom of the map Joanna is making a stand for the shots on the temple and this could remove the bottom fort more damage done up here at the top though so everybody's just rotating around consistently trying to put pressure at the top lane moving back down to the bottom of the map attacking the objective and making their moves right there another attack this time against Anduin as they're attempting to flank in against them both of the globals aren't part of the fight yet we have Falstead in the middle, the Haka at the top. He need to defend this a little bit. And down at the bottom of the map, the blue team still locking a few additional shots in. Nicely done. All right, so with that, more shots fired towards the red team. The Polish team fighting back tooth and nail on the other hand. They are doing really well here. The gas coming out as they're trying to come in again. And there's the ancestral just barely saving the day for Jaina. Bunker is up. Might have to be used there, but it's the Harker that are turning. What a fight. I mean, this thing has been going on for nearly a minute or two already, but they're still battling it out. The portal escaped towards the end. 18 stacks now for Medivh. Only two kills in the game so far. One fort has been destroyed. The one at the bottom of the map is most likely not going to make it as the red team is taking position again and is hoping to push this in just a little bit further so they can take the structure down here. But oh my god. So, off we go. Up in the middle of the map, we have Falstad and Blaze trying to make a play for Jojo, who's already used her iron skin. Arian might be in trouble here and goes down. Well done. Good job. Nicely done here. With the same time, they're going for another kill. They want to go for the fort here too. Sylvanas at the bottom of the map is slowly rotating over to help out. But it seems that another fort is going to be destroyed by the blue team. They take the fort down. Both teams with level 13 talents at this point in time. But the rotation is now hitting the bot lane. They're not stopping. They are just continuing with the momentum and the advantage. Sylvanas trying to escape. Maybe a little bit too aggressively. A portals are out. And they're all escaping. Forrestad hoping for the angle but has to use the gust after Cocoon came out. They're going away from Anduin as the light bomb comes out, but I don't think that Lava Color is going to make it. The Blessed Shield is delaying the inevitable, but he still dies. Anduin is gone. And with that, we now have the next push by the blue team through the objective. Or at least that's what can be expected considering the situation that they're in right now. So all the way up at the top, we currently have three kills to one in total. We have another camp about to be taken. There's two temples that are getting activated in just a few seconds. With Anduin still missing, the blue team will get the initial lead here. But of course, the Polish team is going to fight for this one. They're one level behind, roughly. And yes, there we go. Next quick blow up of the wave. And now the move straight into the mid lane. 
Four shots have been fired by Nubarak. Blaze is obviously sitting at the bot lane and they are starting to take the structures down here very, very quickly. It's all about the keeps at this point in time. So the advantage is there and it's a massive advantage for the Russian players. Let's be honest there for just a second. They still have two forts standing. There's still a couple of towers and also gates out that they could use. Yeah. And that means that if you just trade objectives from this point on out, the blue team is going to win this eventually. And they know it. They fully know it. So right now we have level 16 kicking in any second for the blue team. They know they just have to trade objectives. They don't need to take every single fight here. But then again, if you know one thing about the Russian players throughout the last 10 years of Years of the Storm, it's that they always are ready for a fight. They love the aggression. They love to go into these battles. They don't care if they're down a talent, down one hero. They will take a fight if they think they can win it, even if it might not be the smartest choice. With a level 16 talent advantage, they are hoping to be the ones to decide the boss battle in their favor. And the Haka has already moved down to the bottom of the map since he needs to deal with those siege giants. But they are going straight in for the fight, not even waiting for the boss to be taken. So it's time for Anduin to be attacked. Tries to make it through the portal and does, but just finds death on the other side. And Uberak gets also killed, another one that's down, 5 kills to 2, 16 is in, and the red team just doesn't have it yet. Siege Giants with even more pressure and damage, they will have to be dealt with rather sooner than later. With this 4 versus 3 situation, the blue team is immediately applying pressure on the boss again. And since Medivh is forced down to the bottom of the map to safeguard the keep, they just can't make a move on this. Lay line or no lay night, it doesn't really matter anymore. The keep is nearly gone down here, and the boss is going to take it. 100%. 12 minutes in. It's not the strongest boss yet, but this bad boy is going to hit it hard. One keep will be removed over here. That's at least what we can expect. I don't think they have the tools to burn it down before that happens. And of course, there is now more to grab on the map. You can push these lanes out a little bit further, apply additional pressure up at the top. They're already moving into the middle, trying to remove a few of these towers. So they're really forcing Poland to spread their forces thin right now. We have a few of them dealing with the boss at the bot lane, and the rest is now moving into the middle to defend there. But the rotation towards the top has already happened. It's the same game they've been executing the entire time. You move onto the lane, you unleash a few abilities, you do a little bit of damage, you try to take a tower down, maybe a gate, and then you retreat again. And it works beautifully well for them. They've pulled ahead further and further and further on structures, and now Poland is going for the aggressive move. Bless shield, light bulb, everything! The ancestral too late, the gust came out, but Falstad still died, quest completed, but Anduin dies again, the crybaby gone, no more heals, and now things are really going to hit the Polish team hard. They're trying to escape, Portals are being set up, but the Haka might still be get killed. Ooh, turns it around. Nice. The Ancestral is back out. The Lick was great, but it wasn't just quite enough yet. So, with that, we now... Ooh, boy! Sylvanas! Ah, oh, the ley line. Too late. Sylvanas gone. Now more portals up, they're all trying to escape and get ready, but there's two temples up, that's the big problem. Renella pausing the game, not quite sure if they have a problem here with the disconnect or if it's just an issue with voice, but either way, their position is fantastic. We currently have one altar up at the top that could be captured, and this would destroy the keep at the top lane at this point in time. There's no more structures left over here, so this would all get soaked up. At the same time, catapults now are consistently pushing through the bottom of the map in an attempt to get towards the core and since they are running a four versus three they can absolutely decide where they want to go for right now are they gonna go for the temple alone do they try and get also the siege giants at the bottom for example that's another play that they could make Get both of the camps line them up force the Haka or somebody else on the red team to move to the bot lane and deal with it Anduin down means you can't really attack here, but the problem of course is also that level yeah, level 20 is so close now for the blue team that they should have a massive advantage over the Polish players in just a bit. So even moving into the middle and taking the minion wave out here would be absolutely worth it. Falstead can fly back in once that he's back up on the map and he's going to appear at the same time that Anduin does. But there's still a 20 second gap between Anduin coming back onto into the game and Sylvanas making her way in. 
Quest for Medivh isn't completed yet, but I mean, he's getting closer. The problem is just simply that it's already the, so late in the game. 14 minutes in and he's about to complete the baseline quest. But since he was killed early on once, it took him a lot longer than he's probably comfortable with. So right now we have 32,000 damage for Sylvanas, 34,000 for Jaina. So yeah, they're doing their thing. They go for the Siege Giant camps and Anubarak has taken to the top lane and gets the shots fired. So this keep's gone. And that means that two keeps are gone. Two keeps are lost. More minions can be eliminated now and get them closer to level 20. So this is going to be a very, very difficult attack to stop. Poland, they're gonna try their best to somehow defend the core here, but with level 20 talents in, with a fortified bunker, winter mute, wind tunnel, ooh, I gotta say, this is gonna be rough. Now, to be fair though, the, the blue team doesn't actually have to fight here. They could literally wait for boss and objective to come back up. They can just play around the opponent right now. They're so far ahead, they don't have to go for it. They can just simply sit here, wait for the next objective, wait for the next temples, and then uh, set the push up on those lanes, attack the objective at the same time, and force the Polish team into a checkmate position. So right now, there's of course Medivh just providing vision the entire time, getting ready for also the last and final hit. But yep, as they are going for more structural damage here in the middle and poke this down slowly, exactly this setup is being executed. Get a couple of abilities out, poke the hit points down, prep for the next objective, try and poke them out. The Haka has to deal with the top lane since catapults and minions are coming in. Medivh is done, so that's the good news. But this is 30% of the hit points already lost. And just look at the minimap. Just the vision alone for Team Poland has nothing. Mediv is their best asset when it comes to vision at this point because all the lanes are heavily pushed against them so they have no minions out there that would provide them with information of what's happening here. And that's a huge problem. One more minute for the boss and we have the temples activating in 20 seconds. And it's a double temple. So the level 20 talent hasn't really given a big advantage to the Russian players. They had a bit more map control and Team Poland wasn't willing to fight because of it. But now we have storm talents on both sides. So there's that. And yeah, how do you play this one out now? <laughs> Already the play being made at the top. Of course hoping to get... Oh, there, there's a kill. That's a kill right there. They're gonna get the kill one way or another. No chance for him. Yep, goodbye. To no, what? <laughs> Anduin coming in just in time for the pull. They are only four over here. They're only four. Blaze got a few shots fired to threaten the keep in the middle, but now he's re engaging. So they're getting the stuns out. Nice save on the Haka. Anduin moving back in time to get that pull was fantastic. So yeah, I didn't think that he would realize this quickly what's happening over here. Yeah, only a few shots have been fired. The keep is still standing. Oh, and the birdie is making his way over. Yeah, that's going to be... First of all, they get double shots now. They get the shots at the top and they get the shots at the bottom. So the keep is already gone. And now the core gets attacked directly. They're trying to go for Falstead over here. Sylvanas is ready. Gets immediately attacked. Has to be careful. And nearly gets killed. Bishops wants to barrel out. Das uses the gust. And is still buying time for the team as they are moving topside towards Jojo. So yes, Forza has fallen, but Johanna has also been eliminated. They need to get these shots to prevent their core from falling to the objective. And then at the same time, here's the move. They're all going for the core as the shots are still being fired there. The whole objective being to burn it down before the opponent makes a move. And this should be it. Sylvanas, she just doesn't have the damage output to burn them down quickly enough. This is game. The Russian players, they take the lead in the best of three series in Group B of the European Nations Cup qualifier. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Game number two, Cursed Hollow, everybody. Here we are, our second map in the best of three series. Can the blue team 
win the group without dropping a single map or is Poland gonna turn it around now now quick reminder we have one rule in the nation's cup that affects draft and that rule is that you can only play a hero once within a series so it's a little bit of a tip to the hat in regards to meta madness and the rule set there this is supposed to be a little bit more of a light-hearted event as well we still are hoping and planning to have a main event in Miami at the end of the year or probably Miami but another big international where we also have then teams from Korea for example and from North America again now obviously when we're talking about the Nations Cup in Berlin we're also going to invite a team from each region but we only have six teams in total and we wanted to make this a little bit more lighthearted and therefore just a small rule to make sure we're not seeing the same heroes over and over and over again so in this case the heroes that have been played on the first map cannot be played again it doesn't really force the teams out of their comfort zone too much there's plenty of heroes to go around in Heroes of the Storm these days. We have 90 in total, so missing out on 10 is not going to uh, yeah, not going to make things too crazy. You're not going to be able to ban out a roll or anything. This is going to end up with uh, games where you don't have a support. Now, we have, of course, seen a couple of crazy picks in a group stage already, but that is more because there are big skill gaps between some of the teams. I don't think that we're going to see too many crazy things right here in this particular series. Poland, of course, would love to take this back they start things off with Lucio and we have Hanzo now in the hands of bishops so the last couple of times when they picked Hanzo yesterday we had bishops go for other heroes instead and they've been targeting a lot of overwatch heroes too so Tracer and also Genji are both out right now now we got Liming, we got Muradin in for Curse Tolo here, so they're already banking on resets. Keep in mind that most of the globals are gone, so you can still play around the Vikings, you can go for, I don't know, for Samura if you want to, you could play Abatha, but we don't have the Haka and Falstad up uh, anymore, so if you want to play the, the big map, the macro game, that's a little bit tricky. But, yeah, we have the final few bands coming through. Frontline is getting targeted here, especially by Team Poland since they already picked Murden. So they're just eliminating some of the possible choices that we have on uh, the blue team side. And let's go for the next few picks here. What are they going to choose for their side lane? Is somebody going for something a bit more interesting here? Are we going to see a Samoro, an Abatha, Vikings, anything like it? I don't really think so, but the chances, uh, the chances there. <laughs> we get a Chen and a Zeratul. Okay, did not expect that to be honest. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We get Zeratul and Chen. Haven't seen Zeratul played a whole lot lately. We've seen him once or twice, Meta Madness. Uh, at least in the group stage, I want to say. But yeah, kind of cool that we have him here too. Trying to go for Li Ming and Lucio mostly. A Polish team is reacting with a pick on Leoric and Cassia. So, oh, Charles Treffer, the janitor is in the house as we're waiting for the main tank for the blue team. She's a kid about to lock that one in. And what's it going to be for them? But yeah, Chen is going to be pretty cool here. So Fat Illidan and Zeratul, they're going double assassin pretty much. And Leo against Chen also means that Leoric probably is going to get a lot of drains through. And it's going to boost his damage numbers a little bit. Oh, Chen is the main tank. We have Abathar in the house. Okay, that's a very aggressive composition that they're playing here. Chen and Zaratul with a bit of Abathar support and Brightwing on top of it too. So you can turn any one versus one into a very quick two, uh, one versus three. Interesting. Cross all everybody. Let's check it out. We got the Russian players against Team Poland. Game number two, party time. The blue team is in the lead against our boys from Poland. On the left now, we have Renella on Brightwing. We get Querty on Hanzo, Maitrai on Abatha, Shizakid as the main tank on Chen, and uh, Bishops is playing Zeratul. To the right side of the map, the Polish team with Ritschu on Leoric. We got Alvaros on Liming, Arian on Murden, Itrax on Cassia, and Lavakal is playing Lucio for the red team. We got Stax on Cassia for the level one. 
Zeratul also stacking it up a little bit with the Shadow Hunter. I mean, that's to be expected. So he's not going to go for a Cleave build here. They have an Abatha. He is going to go for a Might of the Nerezim build and going to try to just get his damage out that way. That doesn't really come as a shocker, to be honest. With the Abatha support, anything else would have been a little bit weird. They're even trying to catch Leo, and this is going to be first blood. Yeah, they're taking Leo down very quickly. Abyssal, of course, can symbiote either Chen or he can go for a symbiote on Zeratul. Both are absolutely stellar when they have the additional support from him. Wouldn't expect nothing else, to uh, be honest with you. Down to the bottom of the map, we still got Cassia sitting tight here. Everything fine there so far. Trying to do her thing as best as possible. Push her lane out a little bit. Get ahead in experience if they can. Play around this with Chen topside going one-on-one -on -one against Leo. But as I already said in the draft, you can easily turn this into a three versus one. If you just go, come in with the right wing, uh, then Abatha um, Symbiotes, one of the two, and then uh, you're in a really good spot. So Leo can't really go too aggressive against Chen here. Yeah? You always have to keep that in mind. But since there is currently no fifth hit point pool in the game, they're now coming in and invading the opponent's cap. And I like this a lot. The Polish team has already identified that it is to their benefit to be aggressive at the beginning of the game. And yeah, they, they lose Cassia here. Yeah, that's a bit of a setback, but at least they got the camp. So the question is, are they going to lose more? Chen is deep, and yes, they are. They are losing Li Ming. They might get the counter kill here, yeah, but Brightwing with another heal, and now it's Murden who's in real trouble, so they pay dearly for that camp. Ooh, boy. They really, really pay dearly for that. That hurt. It looked really good at the start, but losing in total now four heroes to your opponent. Oof. That's going to be a little bit crazy. Yeah, that that's that's a bit unfortunate. The initial idea was really good. They just said, okay, guys, if we can invade here, if we can get this, then just let's go. Let's take this camp, steal it away. Even if they only lose one hero, it's still fine. But losing three, that sets you back quite a bit, not only in regards to map control, but also in experience. So that hurt. Chen, yeah, they're going to have some trouble with him as the game continues. The drain of Leo is obviously going to be a nice tool, but still, she's a kid with... Fat Illidan with support from Abyssa is just great. So, yeah. Top side, that's where we still have Zeratul. He's, of course, going to target Li Ming later on in the game and also Lucio. And if he can get that symbiote, then he is going to absolutely murder with this. And this is where the back line is going to be in real trouble on uh, the red team. So I like the draft that is being played by the Russian players. It's definitely out there, but could be very spicy as we're heading into mid and late game in particular. Paralyzing Rage is in. They gave up on the first tribute. And of course, there is still an enormous amount of pressure from the Polish team, as you can tell. So they are coming now through the bot lane, taking the entire wall down. That sets them ahead in structures. Leo is taking very safe rotations between the lanes here, since he's realizing uh, that he could easily fall into a bit of a trap. Mule now for Abatha. Uh, we have 10 stacks for Cassia at the 4 minute mark. Trailing a little bit behind. A, a good rule of thumb is that at 8 minutes in you want to be sitting at around 40. That's good stacking. That's a good rule of thumb. So Cassia is trailing a bit. 8 stacks for Zaratul. So he is continuing over here. And once again, we got Illidan just jumping around. <laughs> Illidan. <laughs> Chen. It's the same thing. One of them is a little bit more fluffy. That's all there is to it. Yeah, level 7. We don't have anything yet for Mirrodin, but Calamity has been locked in by Liming, so that I would say was about to be expected. It's tribute number 2 that we're now talking about. And in an ideal world, what you want to do against an Abatha team is you want to take two tributes before the opponent is level 10. And then you can force that fight before the copy for Abyssal is ready. But in this case, this is just not working out. So the position was a little bit too bad for them. And the rotation was also very fast from the blue team. So they get one of their tributes. That means that the fight over the actual objective over the first curse is going to happen when both teams have level 10 abilities. Chen once again ready here. Yeah, level 9. A little bit of lead now for uh, Poland. Yeah, slightly ahead. Not by much. Still counts though. Level 1, 10 stacks for the freshest ingredients. And yeah, Hanzo gets attacked. Heals are there though. 
Yeah, Shen also has to be a bit careful on this one now. So he got targeted immediately. The next tribute is up, and this one is a much better position for the blue for the red team. But you can tell that they are not engaging as aggressively anymore. Instead, it's now the blue team that is consistently looking to see if they can maybe go for a quick kill and poke this out a bit. Especially with Zeratul, of course, if they can get a cheeky kill on the back line and take maybe Cassia or Lucio down with the help of Abertha, that would go a long way for them. Leo is still at the top, having to deal with the symbiote a bit and with the consistent push attempts that we're seeing from Abertha, who has, of course, gone into the Adrenal Overlord there as well. And the teams are both making a play now for their bosses. So, bosses are attacked on both sides. Level 10 is going to be in for both teams. Might of the Nerezim has been chosen. Only top cake plays for Chen. It's all top shelf, and this one's funny. <laughs> And they didn't even see it! It would've been so good if he could've killed somebody. But, yeah, that didn't quite happen. I mean, it didn't really do a whole lot, but it was funny. It scouted the whole thing out, allowed for a boss stun, made sure that they were not rotating in. I'll take it. I'll honestly take it. So, yeah, job well done. Coming through, and boom, the boss says hello to you. <laughs> I like it. But yeah, so now the bottom of the map is being attacked. Slowed the red team down a bit too. Top side, same thing. Now the good news for the blue team is of course that they got mules. So if they are able to save the fort, that they can repair it. But that's also why the red team is pushing so aggressively. Because they know exactly that that is the risk they're running here. Mule, the mana mule gets dropped. On the on the tribute, Abathur then can then also symbiote that and uh, delay this. They want to prevent the curse from happening, but I'm not quite sure if they can. Oh, I th did he interrupt or did he just cancel? Damn. So he moved away from this one. So they can still fight this one out. Boss at the bottom of the map is still doing damage, by the way. The top one has already been defeated. So they are now going for the channel again. Yeah, Zeratul says hello and interrupts it. Interrupts it again. Jumps out once more. They're just buying time. They're only buying time. I think they're okay with this. Yeah, they're letting it happen. They're absolutely letting it happen at this point. They were not willing to fight this one yet. They wanted level 13, I suppose. So much transference would have helped them as well. But... Yeah. Interesting. Just let the curse go. Didn't make a move for this. Cassia, by the way, on 20 stacks. We're now 8 minutes into the game and she's on half the stacks that I called out earlier. So, yeah. The curse is actually in a bit of a weird spot now because there's siege giants that will stop the top lane to an extent. In the middle of the map, they might be able to get some work done. Uh, but they also have to make sure that everybody's still alive and Liming is already dead. She got popped. They're trying for a follow-up kill and Cassia's not looking too good here either. So that's two heroes down, six kills to zero. All of the lanes got pushed out early by the blue team, which means that they're taking very little damage on structures. They can send somebody down to deal with this camp. They have a level 13 advantage too. They played this out quite nicely. They allowed for the tribute to be taken. We're totally fine with it, accepting that curse. And now they're getting kill after kill. Richu gets killed as well as bishops move past the gate and took down Leoric. So we're looking at seven kills to zero. And a more than one level lead for the Russian players. Poland is having some problems. They are running into some real trouble here with this. Now, how exactly are they going to continue? First of all, they got the mule ready to repair the mid lane fort. Both teams have lost one fort, that's all. So, the big difference is really the experience gap between the two teams. Structurally, there's not that big of... Uh, structurally, there's actually a lead for Poland. So, yes, there is more damage done now at the top. And this changes the equation a little bit, but generally speaking, They've done a bit better. Zeratul, though, might die here. Oh, ho, 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 my God. Nice. That was important. Yeah, he still had the cooldowns ready and used them right away. But he was in trouble there for just a second. So Bishops with the job well done. Very good play by him. And of course, this also bought time for the rest of the team to push these lanes out again and apply some pressure in the middle of the map. They sent multiple heroes towards the top side to deal with the Zyra tool and they just couldn't get the kill. So he was already one versus two there. Had the assistance of Abatha, of course. As much as that counts. 16 would be great for them if they can get it. Zyra tool still at the top. Obviously, Abatha is not going to respect that one versus one. It's going to help out eventually. And Ritual is fully aware of that. But in the middle of the map, the team is pushing. Arrow! And 
And here comes the top keg play against Cassia. Cassia is having some real trouble sustaining herself throughout all of this and stacking up too. She's still sitting at 28 stacks only, but can they get the kill here? Now Leo is coming back in to turn this into a 5 versus 5. He has the Entomb up too, so they all disengage. And once again, it is Abathur with the Mule that is trying to help out in the middle. So yes, the Mule is going to keep this fort in play for a bit longer as level 16 is kicking in for the blue team provides now the master war blade and the envenomed spikes here for zaratul making him even more dangerous the abathur support alone is going to make him now a total nuisance for the back lane they won't even be able to rush away here that slow is super super annoying for anybody that wants to escape that guy so yeah more damage done by bishops at the top and just look at Richu. even with the drain that he connects here he has a rough time abathur is helping out and well that's gonna be a kill and the fort goes down too so a kill and they're getting the fort yeah moved in again and he kind of messed up there so zaratul messing up at the top that arrow ooh, that is straight to north america that arrow didn't hit anything. I'm not quite sure what he was even trying to hit there. They are still hitting uh, Muradin though. So Muradin might have to avatar up. He has the cooldown ready again and does. But they don't have Zavatul in this fight. So that's a problem. The copy comes out from Avatar regardless. Mai try jumping out with a Hanzo copy. And baiting them down just a little bit. Tribute is up again. Zavatul back on the map in another 13. But they will have let th to let this one go. So this one is going to be let go. Top side still pressuring. 16 will be ready for uh, the Polish team in a few more seconds too. 31,000 damage now for Zeratul. Abathat is at 24. Hanzo 29. And Li Ming top damage for the blue team. Idling at 21,000. Obviously with the bosses back up on the map. They're making another play for them. Abatha could in the meantime even help the bot lane to do more damage here. And that's exactly what he does. Pushes this out even further as they go for the boss. They have a slight edge already when it comes to that. But yeah, it is really close here. I mean, we knew this would be the series of the group. This could be a 2-0, it could be a 2-1. I mean, I would not put it past Poland to win not only this game but also the next. But they are struggling in team fights. Now, they are behind, they're struggling in team fights, but with some coordinated effort, they might just be able to turn this one around. But it's not going to be easy. In the middle of the map, Bishops, he's a one-man show now. One and a half. Abathur is still there and has to be accounted for. Defense is obviously up. At the top, Abathur doing his thing. Zeratul roaming the map. Tribute coming up now too. They didn't really want to commit here. They have a one and a half level lead. So as they are... The one thing that they're doing, that the blue team is doing a lot now is... They play the map. So they have Abathar and everyone else just going onto the lanes. Taking those minions and the experience. And that gives them now a very significant lead that will very closely go to level 20. So they are totally fine playing around level 20 here. That's one of the goals for sure. I mean look at the experience that they're having in regards to minion experience. They're 4,000 ahead. So they let another one of these tributes go and accept that the next one is going to be the one that they have to fight over. But, yeah. With there, we now have still the push in the middle. All of a sudden, Zeratul, he, he, I mean, he is the one that has to look for the back line, right? If they fight this on level 20, that would be great for them. I actually assume that if they get level 20, the blue team, sorry, the red team is just simply going to say, okay, we're not going to fight for this one. It's half a level, 30 seconds. Yeah. Zeratul pushing the bot lane, camp, uh, not camp, minion wave after minion wave is now being taken. But they have to move to the top. I think unless they can kill a hero here, they're going to let this one slide. They, they are not going to fight against this. Why would they fight against level 20? There's absolutely no reason for that. <laughs> He's not even moving topside. He's just sitting there waiting for Leo to make a move because he knows fully well that if Leo moves out a little bit too much, he's just going to get killed. Bullseye is in. Here comes the Shadow Strike. They're going for the kill, but they are giving up the tribute at the top. Damn. Really? Okay, he can interrupt this. Yeah, he can interrupt it. Alrighty, so there we are. 
Zeratul at the bottom of the map, dealing with Leo. Oh, what an arrow! The triple arrow, a little bit short distance, but still, that one hit and it hit hard. Zeratul is hoping to take the keep at the bottom of the map down, but Leoric has so far defended it well. Now it seems that Lucio is not going to make it, though, so that's a huge problem. Yeah, Fat Illidan jumps back out, eats the Stormbolt, and here comes Zeratul to clean house. First one down, second one down, three down, and they're gonna kill Muradin as well. The second that Zeratul arrived up at the top, this one was over. Leo wasn't there, he was still trying to protect the keep at the bottom of the map. Full five-man wipe. Zeratul just murdered them with the help of Abatha. Now they go for the bottom keep. And they're not gonna stop here. Of course they're not. Why would they? They're going straight for the core. Great game by the Russian players. Really, absolute credit to them. They played this perfectly. 13 kills, 2-1. Very smart performance by them. Not mindlessly engaging in fights, but taking their battles where they could win them. And they win the group. They win Group B with 6-0 maps, not having dropped a single one here at the qualifier. Nicely done. GG. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.